Okay, my, my name is uh, Dr. Chris Akem. I'm the coordinator of the SATSC project. I'm based at IITA. And uh, basically my role as a coordinator, I look after the four commodities. That's wheat, rice, cassava, and maize. Uh, so far, the project has been running very well for the last four years. This is the fifth year in effect. And we are at the point where we are trying to wrap up the achievements that we've encountered in this project. We decided at the project level to have end of project conferences like this one where all the stakeholders come together for each commodity and take stock of the achievements and try to put it together and actually document it as one of the documents that we can have and which we can refer to going forward. We are fortunate that uh, following up to this project is the third Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation. It's the success of this project that basically led to the initiation of the follow-up project. There are a lot of technologies that we've developed from the project, but there are many other technologies that many CG centers and the national centers have that are all on the shelf. Uh, the African Development Bank, based on the success of this project, thought it was necessary to have a follow-up project where we take these technologies and basically scale them so it can transform agriculture in Africa. That is exactly what we're looking forward to from here on. We are here on a three-day workshop. Just within the first two days, those successes have been highlighted in large numbers. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, machinery, prototypes that we've uh, imported, as well in the processing sector. We've seen what the gem paraboling can do in terms of transforming not only the way rice is being processed, but the profit margins of those who are involved. And that's exactly what the project wants to do. It wants to look at food, nutrition, uh, food and nutrition security as well as income generation for the stakeholders involved. So just a gem paraboling technology, for example, in Benin, in uh, Mali, and in Nigeria is already demonstrating that it can make that big difference. We're looking forward to taking that gem paraboling technology and uh, scaling it to all the different rice growing hubs throughout West Africa and if not, East African countries that are familiar with that technology. Uh, the other area are the other machines, like the Asai Treasure, which has also been manufactured, and the already private sector that are already mass producing them for use by a lot of growers. So there are a lot of technology that we, we realize that are on the pipeline, already being accepted by the different stakeholders, which we think uh, the, the third project coming on We'll take this and scale them and then bring about that transformation that we've been looking for. Uh, it's very exciting that uh, nowadays we have been challenging by the youth unemployment. Uh, incidentally, uh, the DG of IITA came up with some vision some years ago and decided to, enable, uh, to initiate what they call the Enable Youth Platform, in which we basically engage the youth and then give them some uh, training on business development so that they can establish themselves and employ other youth. It's interesting that uh, after initiating this program two or three years ago, more than 30 countries right now are expressing interest that they want to become part of it. And the African Development Bank is ready to make sure that through some sort of negotiated loans with the different countries that have expressed interest, they can actually set up programs to promote the technology that we are developing. So we are very happy that many of the technologies that are coming through the project are those type of technology that youths will really love. They love things like mach machinery, mechanization, which are the things that we are all emphasizing. And so there's an avenue there to engage these youth. Also, if you look at the processing center, the gem paraboling, 80% or more are women. So we have been, there have been a lot of talk of gender inclusion. So also we have these technologies that are actually inclusive for women, where women are actually finding them interesting and exciting. And so we are happy that uh, in addition to getting more income, making sure food and nutrition security are addressed. We are also addressing some social issues such as the inclusion of women and youth in uh, world creation and the transformation of agriculture across Africa.